Hi everyone, thanks for coming back. I just wanted to do a review of why the number 27 is important, but I want to talk a little bit more about the, the prospect of May 27th. And as I said in the first video, I just want to share some things that I think are interesting. But in this video that was done by Rody 61169, he was basing this date, the May 27th date, on the second Passover, which was on April 29th, as you can see from this calendar over here. You can see Pesach, Shini, which is the second Passover. It's on the 14th of ER, but if the calendars are a month off, then that would make the second Passover be the 14th of Sivan, which would make it around the 28th, beginning sunset the day before the 27th of Sivan. But there's also some other videos that I've seen where they state that the actual true Pentecost is on May 27th, and I'm not sure how they've come up with the date May 27th for the true Pentecost, but I've seen a, a couple of videos about that. But I just want to share a short clip from this one over here because this one is really interesting because it talks about the Venus Jupiter conjunctions, which I've talked about as well, and he's saying there was a total of five of them, but the closest one was the one on August 27th. And what's really amazing about this one is what he's done in this diagram is that he's calculated how these conjunctions, when they're divided by phi, which is the golden ratio, what date they come up with as being the phi ratio leading up to May 27th. And in all of these, it comes up with a, a really amazing date. But the most amazing one is the one on August 27th, but because the, the phi ratio between August 27th and May 27th is the Revelation 12 sign. And so it's interesting that you have the numbers 27 here with August 27 and May 27. And so I'm just going to play a small clip where he explains that. He goes over this one first, and I'm just going to play that part. And then you can watch the rest of the video, which is all really amazing. This last one has a lot of sevens in it, as you can see over here. But I'll just play a small clip, and you can watch the rest of the video from the link. Okay. Here is uh, truly, truly an astounding diagram here. It is just amazing. Uh, I'm so thrilled with this discovery here, um, as with so many of the, of the discoveries. For this May 27th being the rapture and God's true Pentecost. Um, so here we have um, the Jupiter-Venus conjunctions. Okay, There was five of them in recent times uh, that were close, and three especially were, uh, were extremely close. Uh, touted even as from the mainstream media as the Star of Bethlehem because they hadn't been this close since uh, the year 2 BC when uh, myself and many others believe uh, what the Ju Jupiter-Venus conjunction was part of the Star of Bethlehem. So you would think that, the star, that these Jupiter-Venus conjunctions, because these Jupiter-Venus conjunctions symbolize the rapture, because the, uh, the uh, Jupiter symbolizes the church, as we know from the Revelation 12 sign. And Venus symbolizes the morning star. Jesus said he would give the church the morning star, and that he is the morning star in Revelation 22. And uh, this uh, conjunction uh, or meeting of Venus with Jupiter in the sky symbolizes Jesus meeting us in the sky. So this is, you know, this is what this is what the meaning is. So you would think that the the day of the rapture would profoundly connect with the star with these Jupiter Venus conjunctions. And so it does. God's true Pentecost on May 27th profoundly connects with these Jupiter Venus conjunctions, as I'm about to explain. Let's go to the closest one of them all first. 
This one here was at 0.03 degrees separation in the sky. This was amazing. This, th it was extremely close. Um, I, I don't know if the statistics about being the all-time closest, but 0 0.03 degrees in the sky was just because just, it just doesn't get any closer. So let's start with this one, because the number of days from it to May 27th is three, uh, 638 days. And the phi of that is 393.6 days. And that gets us to the Revelation 12 sign. That's, that, you know, that could be more profound. I don't know how to uh, express my enthusiasm for that, because here we have this rapture sign connecting with the great sign in heaven, the rapture sign. And this is derived from an equation uh, uh, derived from this May 27th Pentecost date. This is, this is solid proof for this day being the rapture. It's just wow. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move on. There's just so much to cover here. Um, I would like to just, you know, ba uh, uh, <laughs> uh, bask in that for a while, but let's move on. Okay. I just want to add that the Eastern Orthodox Pentecost is on May 27th. I actually saw that in a comment, so you can see that here, that it's on May 27th in 2018. Okay, getting back to this video by Rody 61169 like I said earlier, he had based the May 27th date on the second Passover. This wouldn't be the, the Pentecost date. So if it's the second Passover date, then Pentecost based on the second Passover would obviously be much later than that. It would be 50 days from that date. And so what I really want to talk about is second Passover and I want to try to get to that in a minute but there's just a couple more things I want to point out first. Okay there was a part in this video where he said he was led to the scripture because of the number 70 where it says then the 70 returned with joy saying Lord even the demons are subject to us in your name and he said unto them I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven and so you see Satan falling from heaven in verse, it was actually verse 18. Okay, I'll just show you that again. You see that in verse 10, 17, and the 70 represents the 144,000. I can show you the Strong's number for that is 144, 0, 144, 0 is the Strong's number for 70. And so it represents the 144,000, and in some other translations, it actually has 72, as you can see in some of the other translations, such as the NIV. And so 72 is half of 144,000. And so the, the 70 represent the, the church, the 144,000. And this is when they returned with joy, saying, Lord, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And then it's in verse 18 where Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So like I said, there seems to be a pattern between the verses 17 and 18. But he was led to the scripture because of the number 70 in the 70 weeks in Daniel's prophecy. But it reminded me of another scripture that I came across recently. And I've known about this scripture for a long time, but it's where Jesus actually uses the number that's in Daniel's prophecy, which is 70 times 7, which is 490. The prophecy is for a to total of 490 years. But this is where Peter asked Jesus, how often shall, my, when my brother sins against me, how often shall I forgive him? Till seven times? And Jesus said, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until... 70 times seven times and so 70 times seven is 490 years which is the number of years in Daniel's prophecy and it's interesting that this just so happens to come up in Matthew 18 and this is the only other scripture that I know of where it talks about 70 times seven other than Daniel's prophecy so I'm wondering if God is once again giving a clue for the number 18 or the year 2018. And I just want to add that there would be three and a half years remaining at this point, so that would take you to the year 22. 
another thing that he talked about in this video is how some time ago there was a vision by Dr. Orr where he was in a meeting and he was given this vision that the midnight hour was about to strike and I believe it was a, a meeting where there were Spanish speaking people and then he has a meeting scheduled for May 27th in Spain so that's a possibility but I just want to show you a table that I did that I thought it was kind of funny the way this came up because in this table I put in when will the midnight hour strike and as you can see it comes up with 12 matches and it comes up in Exodus 12 21 so again you have the number 12 frontwards and backwards so I thought that was pretty funny the way that came up just shows how God has a sense of humor because there, there's no doubt that 12 is the the midnight hour 12 o'clock but if you just put in the words midnight hour and strike and in this one I spelled midnight hour all run together and the other one I had separated it out but there's only one match when you spell it that way and it comes up in the book of Job 34 verse 18 and then of course 3 and 4 adds up to 7 and then this would be 18 so I don't know if that's again just showing the, the same pattern and God giving a clue as to the timing okay so now what I really want to talk about is second Passover because what happened is I was looking into the second Passover and what I realized is that the second Passover was actually instituted by Hezekiah he was the one who instituted the the second Passover okay so as you can see it talks about this in 2 Chronicles 30 and so I was trying to remember where it talked about Hezekiah's tunnel to see if it was in the same chapter and as you can see it talks about the acts of Hezekiah in 2 Kings 20 20 and 2 Chronicles 32 32 and I mentioned before how these numbers both have to do with DNA you see the number 23 frontwards and backwards and 22 but what happened is when I was looking for the scriptures originally I had put in Hezekiah's tunnel and didn't come up that way and then I remembered that it referred to it as a conduit so I put in Hezekiah and conduit and what came up was 2 Kings 18 17 is where it talks about Hezekiah's tunnel as well as 2 Kings 20 20 and then of course in to Chronicles 32 and it's mentioned here in Isaiah 36 as well so all of these are talking about Hezekiah's tunnel but what was really interesting is what I noticed and I wouldn't have noticed it if I didn't put it in this way but over here in 2 Kings 18 which actually looks like the year 2018 and then in, in verse 17 it's talking about the fuller's field and this reminded me of a table that I did some time ago and I'll go ahead and show you the table okay it was this table over here and I actually did this probably almost two years ago it was one of my earliest tables and what I was explaining in that video is how the matrix in this table seemed to correspond with everything that was in Natan's vision and I'll go over this table again but one of the terms that was in the matrix was the fuller's field but it was actually coming up in Isaiah 7 and again I'll explain all of that in the next video but what I thought was interesting is that God is saying to Ahaz and I'll go over the name Ahaz in the next video but it's in verse 7 11 where God is telling him to ask for a sign and he first Ahaz says that, that he's not going to tempt God by asking for a sign but then God himself tells him that he will give him a sign 
and that the virgin will conceive and be with child and that was coming up in Isaiah 7:14 which is 777 so he's telling him to ask for a sign in 711 and then God gives him the sign in 714 but I'll have to continue in the next video thanks for watching God